Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Ed, it is like Red Room Month here at Cartoonist okay, Kayfabe. Okay. I have done some uh, some cover art, and so I thought we would get into a little bit of an original art showcase here. Uh, the very first piece, Red Room number one cover. Before we dive in, should you tell them about Red Room, where to get it, uh, when it's coming out? First off, I got to thank you, Jimmy. You helped goose the numbers up, man. Over 50,000 of these things, which makes me a tremendous failure because I was going for six figures, but I'm not going to complain right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get any sympathy, that's for sure. <laughs> Here's the standard cover for, uh, for Red Room. Uh, issue number one coming out or has come out May 19th, 2021. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit. Uh, there are what there are murders happening on the dark web that uh, people are pledging Bitcoin for as like a very sick source of entertainment. That's the problem I introduced to the universe and the comic is about a universe where that happens. Every issue is going to be uh, a single story within that universe. Uh, it's going to be monthly and you're doing variant covers for a bunch of them. Yes, and we'll tell that story in a minute. This is my favorite one so far, by the way. I really like that cover. Yeah, thanks a lot. I do want to point people to the uh, free comic book day comic because Fantagraphics, when the numbers came back, they said, Ed, you hold the record. Like, there's no comic that we've sold that sold more copies than this thing, man. Ex except for, like, uh, free, free comic book day comics, which I concur. I think one of my other free <laughs> comic book day comics sold more than that. So how about we have the top dog of all their comics, by getting everybody to holler at your store, make sure that they get a substantial amount of Red Room Free Comic Book Day comics. This is going to be all original material. Nothing is like reprinted from any of the previous issues, and the stories involved, there are going to be five stories in there. Uh, they all tie into the universe, man. Like Each story ties into one of the uh, other issues. So you, go, you, you need this one to go along with your others. All right, so you asked me to make a uh, a variant cover for issue one. Yeah. I love making covers. That sounded good to me. I did a couple of sketches, uh, sent you some ideas for that, and one of those ideas was your cast of characters sort of lined up with Dan Clow's 8-Ball number one cover. And uh, so that was one of the sketches. 8-Ball published by Fantagraphics seemed like a good idea. That's what we decided to go with. So the first thing I did was, you know, draw this cover and... Uh, thought I would show off the process that I went through for that. I started with the studio edition, Dan Klaus studio edition that Fantagraphics published because they reproduced some of his covers at full size. Um, the first issue is not in there, but there is a pencil sketch and uh, several of the other issues from the early eight balls are. So I knew exactly how big to make it. You know, I try to be as authentic as possible whenever I'm making these things. So what you see here is kind of like my refined pencils. You know, I'd done some incoherent type sketches, really, really loose just to kind of work out size and everything. And then I went to a tighter version like this that I would light box onto my actual illustration paper. That's butter. And if you are watching it at home, if you're familiar with sizes, this is 11 by 17 inch paper. Dan Clouds, for some reason in those early eight balls, just a little bit bigger. And so it's like the live area in his original art that was 11 by 17. I wanted to duplicate that as much as possible. Um, I often will work on bigger sheets and cut them down to whatever size I want. So that's how I got this size. And again, just following it from the studio edition. And then I went in, transferred my pencils with a light box and started inking, um, you know, with your Red Room characters, but following his lead from the cover. Eight Ball is one of my favorite comics. So... I've done several of these kind of things that are an approximation of another comic or an homage to another comic, whatever the case may be. I actually like doing it for one reason, because it's a chance to look very, very closely at the source material. It's it's fun to look super closely at, at, at your contribution here. So I'm seeing choices, right? Inverted lettering so that we get the, the white lettering as opposed to these clouds and... Uh, the sort of uh, reflective nose, a little too plastic. Didn't make it. Didn't make the final cut. Yeah, you'll see little differences between the finished piece and this one. If you look closely at home, this lettering has actually moved up a little bit. You know, once I had reversed it out and saw it in black and white on my screen, it seemed like it was too low, so you move that a little bit. Um, a lot of those minor adjustments happen in the process of making this kind of stuff. The question mark. I forgot the question mark in the original art. <laughs> So I added that digitally after the fact. Uh, one other piece that I added after the fact 
was the backgrounds. If you look at the original 8-Ball, it has these kind of like mm, very light drawn backgrounds. I didn't have that in my pencils. So then I light box again just those shapes, add the detail, transfer it to my original art, and go in with... I think I actually... I hate to give this part away, but I think I actually inked those with microns. So cheating a little bit. Because you know, it's not a tech pen. Exactly. Most of this was done with a with actually with a brush with a few examples um such as this that were done with with uh, those are that's marker. super Clausian you know like he would have those straight lines dead lines uh, for for background stuff you know you use the brush for the foreground character the main focal point and then just kind of uh, give a hint of uh, what the what the background is that they're inhabiting exactly. So very fun to do that, to look really closely at Dan Klaus and see those deadlines and then try to approximate some of those little details in his drawing. Response was good. That's you saw a lot of these, right? Yeah, yeah, almost 2,500 of them. In the process of making this and doing sketches, one of the other ideas that I had was uh, Love and Rockets number one. Seemed like it would line up pretty well with the cast of Red Room Killers, and that was one of my sketches. It's one of those iconic comics in alternative indie self-publishing kind of history and it's an artist i love and would be happy to spend some time really looking closely at love and rockets number one and looking at jaime's work so that's a piece that you're looking for with, with uh with these homage things as like strong strong indie creator vibe. yes exactly we should say you contact me then after this is all sold and you say hey do you want to do a series of these? Eric Reynolds might have contacted me. One of you two contacted me. And the idea is I'm going to do four issues of variant covers because this one turned out good response. I have ideas to do more of these. And the indie comics thing is the thing. What are some like iconic indie comic book covers that I could do? Uh, you guys at home are going to have to stay tuned because all I'm saying so far is the second one, which is going to be Love and Rockets. And I'm going to imagine that maybe you're not dead set on the other, so k favors should put some stuff in the comments. I like that idea a lot. Where they want to see you uh, do a, uh, what were we calling it? An outlaw version? A k Fave version? A Red Room version of uh, their favorite uh All of covers. those, Ed. All of those <laughs> make sense. But I like that indie part. You know, I like the idea of the, the history of indie comics, alternative comics, self-published stuff. And I'm curious to see what the K-Fabers think are the iconic, classic uh, comics that fit that bill. So, these are my pencil roughs for Love and Rockets homage. I, of course, have to find a logo that makes sense. Yeah, cribbing so, off of that uh, great Todd Klein uh, lettering. I didn't even realize that was Todd Klein. Yeah. It is a great logo. I had no idea. That makes a lot of sense. So this was one of my first roughs of a logo. Um, I didn't like the way red was a little bit condensed, not perfect. So did a second version of that. The room part was good. You know, following the, the rockets was relatively easy. But that's my rough pencils that I'm going to be working from on the Love and Rockets Red Room variant. This is boom, the inked version. Petty bone, eat, eat your heart out. <laughs> So this is not the first time that I did a Love and Rockets number one homage when uh, Street Angel goes to Juvie. This is the same kind of concept. You can see with the yellow background for, for height and everything. Quite a bit of variation from the Love and Rockets, but still that was my starting point with this. The light source is the same as yeah, well. Yeah, that's sick. So whenever I do this, I want to be as close to the uh, authentic source as possible. And uh, this time... Instead of going to the studio edition, I went to the art of Jaime Hernandez. I, I did find the, uh, the the dimensions of the pages in the studio edition. Jaime works a little bit smaller. He yeah. has like 11 by 14, I think, are his originals. That is a magazine size ratio. I'm doing a comic book, so I had to do 11 by 17, but keeping the width. So, you know, like size-wise, it's about the same. So I go to the uh, Jaime Hernandez art of book, and it has the tools that he uses and draws with. So for this cover, I went with my dip pens to try to, again, kind of approximate the original art. And um, if you are not familiar with this, shame on you, first of all, right. everybody at home. But you can see this is the original cover that I'm referencing for this, this uh, second Red Room variant cover. Heavily referenced uh, cover, but we should make note, man, that Ray Pettibone, it was the starting point for, for Jaime. Nervous Breakdown EP, man. Yeah, talk about evolution there. And um, this is a cover that I was thinking of, of course. I'm not sure how to work that in, but one of my favorite Jaime pieces. Unbelievable. And uh, 
if you figure out something like that, Ed, just the red and black, I know, seems right? totally appropriate for Red Room. But, you know, Jaime, one of the great comic book artists, great artist, draftsman of comics. So very fun to kind of dig into his work and look at, you know, how he's approaching lighting. It's that very distinct lighting pattern. Um, just a lot of different things that he does that uh, he's a very different artist than well, Dan Klaus. So very cool to kind of go down this rabbit hole. What's, what's fun is he's a very different artist now than he was then. That's true. So these lines have all but disappeared from his modern day style, but they were all over, like, say, the first, like, 10 issues yes. of uh, the original Love and Rockets. So uh, I remember Reynolds, Eric Reynolds, my publisher of Fanta, he commented that, like, yeah, we, we've seen people do this, but nobody has captured the authenticity of the Jaime line uh, like you did here with this, especially from that very specific period of Jaime artwork, man. Yeah, pretty fun. And I did a little bit of a nod, you know, putting in like the checker pattern on one of the characters, something I think of with the uh, with his Love and Rockets work. Absolutely. So trying to work in some of those little tropes to to make it all work. Um, this one was very fun. And uh, I will put on I don't have the color printout, so I'll put a, a color version of this on screen so everybody can see it. But this will be available now for pre-order with Red Room. Uh, number two as a variant. Yes, yes. Another one of those retail incentive uh, covers, man. So thank, thanks again for your contribution with this, Jimmy. Uh, I'm super stoked on it. It's awesome seeing these pieces, uh, you know, live in color. And then uh, I'm still not done with Red Room stuff yet, Ed. So one of the other ideas I had for a cover, I'm trying to think of something super offensive. How about John Wayne Gacy? Perfect. Who, who's known for his clown artwork in that really I would be a little bit ashamed if my mother saw this stuff. <laughs> so John Wayne Gacy was somebody um, that I had considered early on as a possibility for a Red Room cover variant and uh, started looking at his artwork, you know, famous for doing these clown paintings, I guess when he was in prison. He would also do marker drawings. And that's what this was, was an early go of that. Well, I should say you can follow me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg because I post about this. You can read in depth, see all of these scans and everything there. And uh, this was up there. And a store reached out to us to do a kind of like a book plate, a signed book plate. But instead, they wanted to do backing boards, yeah. which I think is genius. Like I may make my own custom backing boards after this experience, but I showed him this John Wayne Gacy piece and he thought that was great. Uh, Menachem at Escape Pod Comics. And this is the backing board. So he printed up several hundred of these, had us sign them, and I guess he is giving them away with purchase of Red Room Comics from Escape Pod Comics while supplies last. One of the kind of great discoveries of doing this direct market comic, pamphlet comic, old school floppies, right, is really you're you're separating the champs from the chumps when it comes to thoughtful retailers in a lot of ways man so uh retailers were getting involved personally in a lot of different ways there were ones that might have several stores or thrown around some big weight have a giant customer base big part of big town they live in something like this and they would invest in like a thousand copies and for that i draw you a cover you right. get your own cover some guys wanted uh other you know, their guys to draw a cover. They got to pass the mustard and, and, and be dope. You know, I can't have some <laughs> whack red room shit out there, but we've, we've, we've done a couple of those deals, man. And this one, uh, you know, I've, I've done, uh, three, three sets of book plate type things. Okay. Comics in, uh, in the heart of London, I think. Uh, and that was like, I mean, these guys are UPSing stuff to, to me and like, having return envelopes, I'm, I'm talking shipping charges yeah, right. of like $150 to and fro, you know? So uh, they're, they're doing, they, they run their own businesses. They're not just looking in a diamond catalog saying, oh, we'll order this, 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 and just like letting the fates decide. It's like they understand that we have a giant fucking audience and 500 to 1,000 different people come to this channel every 28 days to watch videos so they're, they want to get as involved as possible and i'd like more stores to get involved too right like it could be a cyclical thing and they will get their call outs and have their shop you know shouted out like to five hundred thousand people if they play the game properly man and i thought this was a pretty genius application yeah i liked everything about this i've, I've worked with menachem before i had a book release there uh very impressed with his store 
like you say, Ed, impressed with a lot of these retailers that go that extra mile where I've had signings or we've done book plates. Um, I like seeing that side of the business. You know, it's a little bit different, but it gives me ideas for my next book launches. So uh, Escape Pod Comics, where you can find this one. And uh, the last piece I was digging out original art, Ed, had to bring out our logo because it was in the flat files. And this is kind of, uh, you know, the cartoonist kayfabe variant covers for Red Room. So I thought the viewers at home might be interested to see what this original art looks like. The first piece we ever did on the same page, I think. That's true. And definitely the you know very beginning days of Cartoonist Kayfabe came up with the logo before we released our first video. So kind of neat to see uh, you know your your work obviously drawn, uh, me drawing myself, and then each of us doing one of the the words in the Cartoonist Kayfabe logo. But kind of cool to see it at uh, Jaime original art size. Yeah, that's got them right. And you know what, man. I think we're going to have to maybe do a legit, like, cartoonist kayfabe variant, man. Picture, you know, poker face stabbing me in the eye with knives. Picture hazard pal face. I don't know, man, snapping your neck. Oh, I assumed I would be one of the Red Room killers. <laughs> you guys know me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I think we might have to get on that, dude. Sounds good. I'm going to go call Eric right now. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what's out there? Tell us what your uh, independent, iconic comics are throughout history as well in the comments below this. Follow me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see this is exactly literally a post that I made. So uh, this is the kind of stuff that I'm sharing on there. Original art, process, sketches, and kind of my thought process on how I make comics, along with rare out-of-print mini comics and zines that you can download that you can't get anywhere else. Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. We've been talking about it for 20 minutes, man. Red Room, hitting the streets, May 2021. That's this month, man. A couple weeks from now as of this recording, and it's going to be coming out like clockwork every, you know, four weeks. Fresh issue. Uh, you can pre-order all those issues at the Fanographics website. I uh, hit my link tree in the description below. Uh, the link, you'll get a link to Fantagraphics that way. If you want to read these comics ahead of time, Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Three bucks get you the whole archive. There are three complete issues up there as we speak, and I put out new uh, strips every Tuesday. You can join the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter mailing list at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on. And Ed, it sounds like a busy year for you. Yes, sir. Uh, busy for me, too. What Coming you, soon. What you working on? <laughs> you can also find... I'm trying. <laughs> you can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give him one less set of marching orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Order more Red Room comics. <laughs>